Hello. Ten to the minus ninth, the essence of life and energy at the nanoscale. Before we begin, I know I just heard that there is a new nanoparticle in Spokane, and it's called the Gonzaga particle, apparently. <laughs> Who or what started the interest in nanoscience? Some of you may know that 10 to the minus ninth means one billionth of a nanometer. Others may know that nanoscience has two parts. One, the nanoscience portion of it, which is the science and discovery and research part of nanoscience and the principles associated with the findings. And nanotechnology is the use of that to build things at the nanoscale. Others may know that there's two pioneers that were essentially started this process. Dr. Richard Feynman in 1959, uh, who I thought wrote the coolest uh, doctoral thesis with a, a really great title, um, Wonderful Things, New and Wonderful Things Exist at the Bottom. And that's what started his idea of nano, explaining nanoscience. In, by 1974, almost 20 years later, Professor Norio Taniguchi expressed nanotechnology part of it on the assembly, formation, and deformation of particles at the atom level and at the molecule level. Now, I was born in 1950. I did not have a chance to talk to Dr. Feynman about his research in nanoscience because I was far too busy opening up my own laboratory in 1958, at the age of eight. This was my ChemCraft senior laboratory. This was the beginning of a manic attachment to science and engineering. It was the most fun part of the 1950s is that there was no Consumer Product Safety Commission. <laughs> so there are real chemicals in there that do real damage. Um, and my parents, in awe and shock, learned that. Uh, although every year they kept on giving me another one. So. Okay. What can change at the nanoscale? Well, to make it simple, everything. Every single thing that we know of can change at the nanoscale. Now, what do I mean by that? New materials, new medical advances, new energies, new applications, new adaptations, and some of those adaptations can turn into new applications and go right back up to scale again. So it's an extraordinary change of things at the nanoscale. I'm going to go through the top, my top 10 list of really cool things. Two of them are going to be for each category that we go through. And you will see across the broader spectrum of nanoscience, what really has changed. And these are things that are going on right now. So these aren't uh, futuristic things. These aren't things 20 years from now. These are things that have already happened, are happening right now, or will be presented to you in the next 24 to 36 months. You'll see them, you'll feel them, you'll know about them. New nanomaterial combinations have already produced a leap in infrared technology. This is an extraordinary uh, 
way of detecting photons and turning those into electrons at the photo detection level. This discovery was first done by Arizona State. So for those of you who want to know where all these things come from, I have put the names on there, so if you're interested in those things, you'll, you'll know where to go. Delft University and Endoven have succeeded in, in building, in the building blocks of a quantum computer. Now if you look at that, how is it made? Well, it's made with a 3D model at the nanoscale. Not only is it made at the 3D model at the nanoscale, but the wires that, and the gates and the sources that connect it all and, and make it work are also organic substances at the nanoscale. Qubits that are used to power that are actually inserted into the nanowire, and that's what transmits the electricity through the system. Medical advances, nanobots. I know you've heard of them, but they exist. Not only do they exist, they do extraordinary things. They're inserted with a syringe and are able to travel through the body and are controlled by a technician on the side telling it exactly where to go. And this is non-invasive surgery. It's just as a syringe finds cancer cells and destroys them because it transmits the medicine that's in the nanobot to the affected area and changes your, changes your life. These are nano wiffle balls. This reduces the lethal effect of chemotherapy. Now, right now, I think many of us know that chemotherapy, you know, they, they put a port in you, and you're absorbing all those chemicals through your entire body. And maybe you have breast cancer, or maybe you have some other pancreatic cancer or something. But the medicine they're, that they're giving you through that port is going through your entire body. No more. These will go directly to only where the problem exists, and the rest of your good cells will remain healthy. New energies. NIST is one of the few labs in the world who's been growing, organically, semiconductor materials, where we use those in microelectronics and just about everything that we have in our, in our lives. In, in, your, in your car, in your TV sets, everything. Well, now they're being grown. Not, no copper wires, no, no other types of wires being made. They're being grown. And the luminescence and the flexibility of those is astounding. So in the near future, and actually going on right now, you'll be able to see some of those changes in some of the uh, uh, overhead uh, changes that you see in your heads-up displays in cars and so forth. All those things are, are nano-built. Solar liquid power. This one is my personal one. I met uh, Dr. Richard Smalley in 2003. I was working on uh, a mill spec, a military spec problem of using renewable energy sources to create a new source of energy that would power essentially a gauntlet of communications that would be sent, that would be uh, worn by the military in, in field, in the battle, by SWAT teams, police, uh, first responders, so forth. The thing that I discovered is that I had to know um, uh, how to power these two lithium uh, batteries, these flat lithium batteries that I had placed on this gauntlet. And I had to find a new way of charging those. And I didn't know how to do that. I was running out of, out of time. I was running out of, of abilities. Because if you look at all the, all the solar technologies that are available, they don't meet military spec. Think of it this way. A solar panel, the average one, is anywhere between 8 to 12 or 13 percent efficient. How am I going to take that efficiency figure and put it on potentially the last lifeline that a, that a military officer or a military soldier would have in the field. 
I can't tell them that it's only 11% efficient. I wouldn't send anybody out in the world with those kind of efficiency numbers. So since I can't do that, I have to come up with something else. In conversations, in just a quick conversation with Richard Smalley, I told him what my problem was, and all he did was smile at me. And he said, the problem is that you're looking in the wrong place. You should put all your time and all your energies into looking at nanoscience as the solution. That was in 2003. My journey since then, in 2010, I invented solar liquid power, and we, I got that to work. In 2011, we went through a proof of concept with the military and the government, and they found it uh, game-changing. We are now in the midst of getting that ready to go into production in this year and out into the public for public trials in 2014. And what that will do is that coating will not only go on the glove, but will go on most things which we did not know was possible in 2003. It will go on e-cars, for example. The coating will go on there. That will power the e-cars, and they'll never need a charging station, just to begin with. And it'll go on houses and roof tiles and all sorts of things. And we did not know what we were accidentally discovering. But the extraordinary uh, journey started with one man telling me that I was wrong, <laughs> spending all sorts of time in the wrong direction and guiding me to the right place. And that's what moved this forward. All right, uh, new applications. Oh, this is good. Uh, these are artery cleaners. As you know, notice in the top, that's a syringe. And that is injecting an artery cleaner in your body. Now what that's doing is that's using the organic material that's already in your bloodstream to replicate itself. Follow me now. So it's replicating itself and it's starting to clean out your arteries for the people that have those kind of issues. And it's cleaning out all sorts of things. As soon as it's finished and it's timed, it disintegrates. It's out of your body, never was there. And your arteries are cleaned. Dr. Gordon Chu is a dear friend of mine. He's, uh, two years ago, started uh, working on graphene. And these are flat carbon molecules arranged in a honeycomb lattice. This is done at the desktop level, just so you understand. He is creating structures, beams, all sorts of things that are stronger than steel, no smelting, no no smokestacks, no anything at the desktop level, material that is stronger than steel. New adaptations. I had to bring ice cream to you. <laughs> so uh, Dermazone uses a nanolipic particle technology, but what it really means is that there is a particle that I can add uh, a pH factor and balance your pH. So that means if, if you have more acidosis, if one person has more acidosis, which is normally true, than someone else, I can actually balance your pH factor. And you can actually taste strawberry probably for the first time, as it really tastes, because it'll change the pH factor in your mouth. Plus, if we do this right, we can add vitamins and nutrients and, and minerals to that. So that means your children will come back saying, well, mom, it's, it's okay to have more ice cream because with these nanoparticles, I'm getting all my vitamins and nutrients and everything that I need, and things are good. Things are good. This is a military spec, which is kind of interesting. Uh, this is a nanoscale uh, coating that's 95% air in its, in its uh, construction. And what it does, it repels all liquid surfaces, all, all of them. So when that scuba diver gets out of the water, he's completely dry. Now the cool part about that is that right now, you may say, well, this is sort of the future thing, but it's in Gap Kids already. They're using that same technology for children's clothes. All right, in all these wonderful things, so you can see that the world is really large. 
but we actually follow rules. There are rules and guidance and all that for us because it is a science and it's a pervasive science and it's a, it, it will have massive changes to everything that we do and think. And we have to have something in place to make sure that we as scientists and engineers follow good rules so that we provide you things in, in, with integrity and that it helps humanity. Because we do want to remain responsible and accountable for what we do and there are processes and actions for everything we do. So there is a big, you know, full disclosure about everything that we do and everything that uh, will affect us in the future. Nanoscience will become the most pervasive contributor to our time. And as you can see just at the beginning of this, um, these things are going on right now. They will be in your hands if they're not already. Uh, and, uh, and the rest of them will be coming out in these next 24 to 36 months, and they will have extraordinary change to the way we see our life, how we're going to work, how we're going to play, how we're going to live. Thank you all very much. <laughs>